we're in this new generation, our heart is after the platform. It's not after God. Yeah. God never called us to a platform. He never called us to a platform. He always called us to relationship because it's not the platform that saves. Yeah. It's not the platform that delivers. It's not the platform that heals. Right. It's our relationship with Jesus. I'm a millennial and I'm raising Generation Z. And what I've seen is some concerning trends. Um, I was reading a, a study that Pew Religious Landscape, they, they released about a year or two ago. And they were saying that the fastest growing religious identity is the religious nun, N-O-N-E. Oh my goodness. So yeah. no religious affiliation mm -hmm. at all. And the population that's actually driving that growth um, is the millennial and Generation Z population. Yeah. And that's a concern because it feels like there's been this kind of lack of authentic relationship with God. And I right. think that's an outgrowth of a lack of an authentic experience with God. You know, we have so many just fast growing churches like popping up on every corner. And yet, as we're having more and more churches growing and seemingly thriving, we're seeing fewer and fewer people who are growing and thriving in God. And I'm concerned because when I do talk to people in my generation, I had a conversation with a friend not too long ago, and he was like, I want to get to the point where I see my name in lights. And this is someone, like, he's a Christian. Right. He's like, I want to see my name in lights. Right. You know, I want to be on these right. big platforms. And I asked him, I said, well, why? Like, why? He was like, man, because, you know, everybody, like, likes these people and they look so cool and this. And I was like, so you want what you believe they have in the material realm, but you don't actually want a relationship with God? And he was like, yeah, of course I want a relationship with God, yes. but I want what they have. And I've noticed that there's been this kind of, like, grasping for influence yes. versus grasping for God. Yeah. And um, there's a story in the Bible that I wanted to, to read because as I was thinking about how this is showing up in the terms of miracle signs and wonders, it took me back to the story of this guy named Simon the Sorcerer. And it's in the book of Acts, Acts chapter eight. And the church, you know, it has scattered. There's a lot of persecution happening. And so Philip, he shows up in um, Samaria and he, it says in verse six, it says, when the crowds heard Philip, and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. It says that um, many were healed, many were delivered, and so there was great joy in that city. But then in verse nine, it says, now for some time, a man named Simon had practiced sorcery in the city and he amazed all the people of Samaria and he boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention. They exclaimed, this man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and was baptized and he followed Philip everywhere. He was astonished by the great signs and miracles he saw. Now the apostles show up on the scene because they hear what's happening in Samaria. So they show up on the scene and now they are baptizing people. And in verse 18, it says, when Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money mm -hmm. and said, give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said, may your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. I feel like there is a population of people that are in the church and we're in this new generation our heart is after the platform, it's not after God. Yeah. And that's what bothers me and that's what worries me. And I feel like we have to get back to realizing that God never called us to a platform. Yeah. Yeah. He never called us to a platform. He always called us to relationship because it's not the platform that saves. Yeah. It's not the platform that delivers. It's not the platform that heals. Right. It's our relationship with Jesus. And I just would love for you all to minister out of your own heart um, yeah. to this next generation. I'm not a millennial, but I married one. Um, I would say, I think, again, this is my own perception, is what happened early on was that the church was kind of irrelevant and people started feeling like it was aging out. And so we had a lot of 
people that were in the next generation wanted to make it cool yeah. again, which was not a malice in their heart. It wasn't something they were trying to do. They were trying to make Christianity relevant. Yeah. Like, hey, I actually am like you and I talk like you and I look like you and I act like you, but I love God. But the problem was, I think a lot of times people assumed that they didn't see the dark part or the long wait in their yeah. life. They just kind of popped up and emerged. Yeah. And yeah. I think sometimes we don't often know that there is a waiting and a silence. You know, I remember someone saying many years ago, as I started to kind of have a public platform, they said, where did you come from? Mm. Where did you come from? And I said, well, I've been serving this church over here right, for 19 right, years. Right. I've been taking care of the sheep. Yep. You just saw me kill Goliath, but you haven't seen yep. me taking care of sheep for 20 yeah. years yeah. over here yeah. and doing setting up chairs and cleaning yeah. toilets yeah. and vacuuming and doing the things, praying for the people. Yes. And I mean, I was yeah, doing yes. it all. And so there's a disconnect where they're, I think because it's on a platform. So I'm just saying there's a simultaneous thing happening where they're making it cool, which yeah. we want that to be, yeah, relevant, but there's a part that they're missing, which is the character, the yeah. Thing that sustains it. Yes. And then you add into all of it, not to make it darker than it is, you see people that are popping up, but they lack the foundation. That's and right. so then they're also hurting a generation because they're all of a sudden cool and relevant, but then they can't keep their marriage together. They can't mm -hmm. keep their social media, their DMs yeah. clean. And because they don't understand that they have this anointing and this grace, and we always think God's going to remove anointing if someone doesn't have a right. But the Bible says God does not take it back. So just because yeah. I'm cool and I can prophesy and I can speak and I can heal and yeah. not obviously with the gift of God, doesn't mean that my inside is, my house is clean. Oh, yeah. And so that's the disconnect. And so I don't have an answer for it as much as I to have the burden yeah. that you're saying, how do we get people to see it? And I don't know, I don't know other than for us to have an authenticity yeah. and to live it out in a way that says, don't look at me, look at him. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to fully do it, but I have the same heart. I think it's discipleship. Yeah. I think discipleship is lacking in the body of Christ. Yeah. And I think we have built a crowd mm -hmm. uh, of consumers. And so then social media has not helped. Mm -hmm. And we're saying we have influence. I think there was a season where it was like, oh, it's great. We, we need to have influence with the world or influence with the celebrities. <laughs> right, 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 so I'm like, right. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> influence with this and influence yeah. with that. And if I look at Jesus, mm. I go, he had authority. And there right. is a difference between influence and so authority. True. And the so only true. way you gain authority, you know, we see Jesus in the temple at 12 years of age, mm -hmm. unpacking scripture with revelation. He's the word made flesh in small form, yet yeah. he is marveling yes. the yes. scholars, right? Yeah. But then you don't hear a peep from yeah. him mm -hmm. from 12 to 30. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have any record of what he did. We don't. We don't. We can assume, we can say he was doing this and we're doing that, but there was a hidden space between 12 and 30. Then he gets baptised in the water. Holy Spirit comes upon him, remains on him, goes into that desert experience. And I really feel like in that desert experience, he gained an authority by being completely obedient. Yes. And from what he sowed from 12 to 30 was then exercised to overcome the enemy so that when he came out into platform ministry, he had three and a half years on this earth, yet it was potently powerful. Yes. And I just have this sense that it's obedience that increases authority right. and it's disobedience that decreases it. Yes. And yeah. we've got a generation that doesn't know how to be obedient to their earthly authority. That's right. Their godly authority, I, literally, it's my pet peeve. I'm raising my children. You know, I have a 14-year-old son and that boy wakes up every morning, has made his lunch, has got himself up, showered, and he kisses me goodbye at 6.30 a.m. while I am just waking up <laughs> and he's at the bus stop at 6.40. There is a discipline in his life that I am growing in him because he needs to understand this is what gives him an authority. The same with my daughter. My children, you wouldn't even know they're the pastor's kids if you came to my church. You wouldn't know. Yeah. You would not know. Would you? You, you didn't <laughs> say that? True. You don't know. And they're serving and they're hidden yeah. and they're not in the green room because I'm teaching them about their obedience yes. to God and it's gaining an authority. Yeah. And then I, you know, my daughter gets up to speak the other week and everyone was like, 
where the heck did that come from? <laughs> and I said, well, because I'm not showcasing her and platforming her. That's so true. But they said when she prayed, yeah. there was an authority. Yeah. Is it because we've been doing that in the hidden places? And I think we have to raise disciples that are hidden. We have a policy in our church where you come in, you have to sit yes. mm -hmm. before you serve. Yes. Yes. I have to see that you've been tried and tested and there is a lack right now of discipleship and being hidden to gain an authority that the church is lacking. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.